Hello and welcome to the Budget Knitter Podcast channel. My name is Will Sparger and today we are doing the next installment of the Budget Knitter Sock Along 2019. Today we are finally going to turn the heel. I know several of you have been waiting for this point and I'm really excited to be bringing you this portion. This is the hardest part of knitting a sock. So if you've gotten this far, congratulations. You're about to do the last difficult part of the entire thing. So as, as you can see here on my first sock, I have turned the heel, and this is what it looks like. This is uh, one side, and this is the other. So when we turn the heel on a sock using a short row technique, we've been knitting in a circle, in a circle, in a tube, all the way up to about mm, here-ish, about here. So now what we're going to do is the stitches that are on this half of the sock are going to be unworked and we're just going to work on this side of the sock. So we'll be actually turning the work back and forth so there will be some purling in here as well. So uh, you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. But if you see here, uh, this is, it's a little more open on this side. So on one side we create our German short rows with a knit stitch and on the other side we create them with our purl stitch. Now the nature of the German short row heel is that the pearl side always looks better. It just does. That is just how it worked out. I'm sorry to say, but that is <laughs> that is what happens. So I actually had a friend of mine show me a little bit of a technique that I'm going to use on the one that I'm teaching you here today so that hopefully we can close some of these holes and your socks will match with your heels. I'll have one that's a little more open. However, that being said, I have tried this on. The holes really aren't that prominent. It's not that big a deal if you don't want to do the extra little technique that I'm going to show you to get these holes to close up a little more. Also, I haven't tried this technique. I've only seen it done. So uh, with that being said, uh, use the technique at your own discretion. It may, since I've never done it, and this will be the first time I'm trying it, it'll be an adventure for all of us. So, let's go ahead and move to the sock that I haven't turned the heel on, which is this one. Funny enough, this is the same skein of yarn. I promise it's the same skein of yarn, it's just the dye job for this yarn. Uh, but, anyway, so also if you've noticed, I have switched to using Magic Loop. I was doing two circulars, that was not working out great for me. I don't know if it was just the circulars I was using. Wasn't a huge fan. So I got fed up and I switched to doing Magic Loop. This one is my interchangeable. The other one is actually a fixed circular I bought specifically for sock knitting in the future because Rarely do I ever knit two socks at the same time. I'll knit one and then knit the other, so I don't need more than one sock needle. Uh, but I did decide to go ahead and buy like a designated fixed sock needle. Okay, so grab your sock, the one you want to start with, and grab. Uh, you should, well, I'm assuming it's on a needle. The only other thing I'm going to recommend is a stitch marker that is thin. Uh, or even just a piece of scrap yarn, something that is thin because we're, we're going to use that to mark the middle of our heel. And if this is too thick, then it'll create a little bit of a jog on the bottom. It, it won't be too visible and it will block out if you decide to block your socks. But if you're kind of paranoid about having a stitch that's a little too loose, uh, I recommend having the thinnest stitch marker possible. So let's go ahead and get started. I am at the beginning of my round. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I know I have 34 stitches, which means I need to separate the heel in half. So at this point, you need to decide where you want the bottom to be. If uh, Since this is the beginning of my round, this is where I usually do the heel. But if you don't like this as the bottom of, you, of your foot and you want it to be the top, go ahead and knit to the back half and we'll meet there. Uh, since I'm where I want to start and put my heel, I need to knit 17 stitches and then place this marker, which is great because the way this is going to work is uh, we're actually going to go ahead, as I'm knitting across, it will be setting us up to begin our first short row. So 
since I'm magic looping it, this one's sliding across the needle a little bit easier than the last one. So I have to knit 17 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. I'm going to go ahead and place my marker. And now I'm going to knit up. I'm going to knit all of the stitches except for the last stitch. We are going to leave the last stitch unworked. So we'll knit up to that point. Now, um, a lot of you may have different stitch counts than I do. I'm using a sock stitch count, uh, a full stitch count of 68 stitches. Some of you may have a thinner foot, some of you may have a larger foot, so your stitch count may vary. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how many stitches we're going to separate for the left and right side and how many we're going to leave in the middle. Okay, so I've left the last stitch here. So we are pretty much set up now to start working the first of our German short row stitches. Now, here's something you need to think about. When we're dividing this, we need three parts, a left side, a middle, or a bottom, and a right side. Take the total number of stitches you have on this half of the sock. So for a sock that is 68 stitches, half of my stitches is 34. So out of 34, I need to divide by three. Well, those who uh, know their times tables pretty well, 36 does not, or 34 does not divide by three evenly. So what I recommend is going up to the next number that is divisible by three. So for me, that would be 36. 36 divided by three is 12. So the idea here is that I wanna leave 12 stitches in the middle of the sock. So that's six on each side. So let's say you're knitting a sock that has 56 stitches. That would be 28. So you've got a really small foot or you're knitting for a, a younger child. Um, so you've got 28 on each side here. Well, 28 isn't divisible by three, but 30 is. So you would then wanna leave 10 stitches on the bottom and then you would have five on each side. So you will have, for me, there will be six unworked stitches to the left and the right of the stitch marker. For you, that may vary, but take whatever your number of stitches is, divide it by three. If it's not divisible by three, go up to the next number that is divisible by three, and then whatever the th one third of that is, divide that by two, and have that number on each side. I hope I explained that well. Um, basically, you just wanna split this into an even thirds as close as you can. So if I have 17 stitches on each side, and I'm gonna leave six unworked, that means I'm going to have 11 German short row stitches on the left side and the right side of my heel. Now, this stitch that's over here unworked, we are going to do that, but we're gonna do it in the middle of our total heel. We are not gonna do it at the beginning. If you do too many uh, if you do too many German short rows, you end up with a really loose stitch in a hole, which I am gonna show you how to close that corner as well. Uh, but we only do a German short row in the middle of turning our heel, not at the beginning or the end. Okay, so we've knit up to the second to last stitch. Uh, last stitch unworked. The stitch we're going to put our short row on, you knit that stitch. With traditional wraps and turns, you don't knit the stitch you're gonna do the short row on. With German short rows, you do knit that stitch. So we've knit it, we're gonna turn our work, slide our work back up. Now, with yarn in front, slip as if to purl. See that? With yarn in front, slip as if Sorry, my hands may not be in the frame. Hold on. Okay. With yarn in front, slip as if to purl to the right needle. Now, tug really, 
tight like you want this stitch and this stitch to be really close together hold on I gotta get my yarn situated here so we're gonna pull up on that to create this double stitch here now we're gonna purl across our heel to the second to last stitch on the other side so we're gonna yarn forward and purl that stitch keeping those as close together as possible oops okay nope I still got it okay so we purl and then on this next stitch also give it a little bit of a tug just to keep everything nice and tight and now we're gonna purl all the way across to the second to last stitch leaving the last stitch unworked again so just knit across while I'm doing that or purl across I guess actually while I'm doing that how are y'all doing you having a good day hope you're enjoying sock knitting it's a lot of fun if you've never knit socks this really can be quite therapeutic my cord is twisting on me in a way that I don't really like right now when you get to your stitch marker of course you're gonna slip your stitch marker and then I make sure that I do a you know a nice snug stitch after the stitch marker just to kind of keep that gap closed as much as possible so the reason I'm doing the actual heel and not just showing you an example is because I want you to see kind of what it looks like on fingering weight yarn I know a lot of people who teach their sock knitting they'll use worsted but things do look different on thinner yarns and I think that showing you on fingering weight on the actual project is a better way to do this okay so I've just purled the stitch the second to last stitch last stitch unworked now we're gonna turn our work again because this is our other side of our German short row now we have to do the same thing bring yarn to the front slip as if to purl pull up tight this is really hard to do when my hands are so far away from the camera or from my body we're gonna pull up tight to create that double stitch and insert as if to knit so if you notice we slipped with the yarn in front by pulling up the yarn is now in back so we're just gonna insert as if to knit on the next stitch and that's when I give it another good tug and I knit the next stitch and then insert to knit and I give a little tug again just to keep it snug and then now we're gonna knit up to the, the double stitch on the other side and I'll show you what that looks like because this is where you can get a little uh, like if you're not paying attention to which stitch is actually the double stitch you can accidentally skip one which is not the end of the world but I want to show you guys how to do this properly slipping the stitch marker doing a nice little knit couple knit stitches after to keep that snug so oops Slide those stitches down a bit. Okay, so I've got the last stitch. Here's the double stitch and the stitch right before the double stitch. So we're gonna knit the stitch right before the double stitch. So now we've got the last stitch and the double stitch and now we're gonna turn our work to do our German short row. with yarn in front slip as if to purl pull up tight to close the gap yarn in front insert into the next stitch and purl keeping the yarn nice and tight insert into the next stitch and purl nice and tight and purl across we're going to do this a couple times I'm going to show you these stitches each a couple times while working the heel with you I would knit the whole thing but that might end up being an hour-long video and I don't know if you guys want to sit here and knit the entire heel with me but on the next pass I'm going to show you a little trick to keep track of how many stitches you're working All right, we're at the marker slip purl 
All right, so we're going to purl up to the next up two, but not including the double stitch. So on the purl side, it looks a little different because you can, uh, the stitch does end up being a little tighter. How many do I got left here? Uh, okay, four before the double stitch. So I'll do three. One, two, and three. Okay, last stitch, double stitch, stitch before the double stitch. We're gonna purl the stitch before the double stitch. And now we're gonna turn our work. Now, it's easier for me to remember to have my yarn front if I go ahead and yarn back before turning my work. So now the yarn's already in front for when we are going to slip our stitch with yarn in front, pull tight so that the yarn is in back, insert into the next stitch as if to knit, keeping tight, wrap yarn as if to knit, or wrap yarn to knit, and knit the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, keeping it tight, and knit the next stitch and knit across. So I'm gonna get up to the marker and show you sometimes how I keep track of how many stitches I need to knit to make sure that I don't accidentally skip one. Okay, so I'm at the marker. Now I know that I've worked there, are, I know that there are 17 stitches on this side and I know that I have one unknit and two double stitches. So that's 17, 16, 15, which means I need to knit 14 stitches. So I'm gonna count 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Double check. Yep, the next stitch is a double stitch. I don't want to work that. Turn the work. With yarn in front, slip as if to purl. Pull tight, wrap, insert to purl, and purl the stitch. And purl. So when I get back to the marker, I'm going to count 14 stitches again. Cord's getting a little twisted on me. Nature of the beast. Nothing I can't work with. Almost to the marker. Slip marker. So now I'm going to count 14 pearls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. And we'll just double check here. Yep, the next stitch is a double stitch. Yarn forward, turn work. Slip as if to purl with yarn in front. Pull up tight, insert to knit, and knit across. We will do one more of these together. One more back and forth. Get up to the marker. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Because remember, last time we did fourteen, so this time it's thirteen. Turn, 
with yarn in front, slip as if to purl, pull tight, yarn forward, purl the next stitch, and purl across. I hope you guys are enjoying this. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy knitting sock heels. I enjoy knitting socks, period. I think they're just a fantastic garment to have. And they're a lot of fun to make for other people as well. I've made a couple pairs for my sister. None of which I've actually sent to her, but I have made her a couple. Okay, we're up to the marker. So I'm going to do 13 again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Yarn forward, turn, work. Okay. With yarn in front, slip as if to purl. Insert into next stitch to knit. Pull tight and knit. Okay, so those are the German short row stitches and we're going to utilize those again. What I want you to do now is continue doing your German short rows until you have the number of stitches that you need left unworked. So for me that's going to be 12 unworked stitches, 6 on either side of the stitch marker. Go ahead and work up to that point and then I will show you the next step of the heel. It'll basically be the middle portion where we will get set up to work the second half of the heel. So as you can see there, the we've got a cute little V going right there. All right. So for me that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six more back and forths. So six more German short rows for me and then we will be at the middle. So I will join up with you when I have my only my unworked stitches left. All right, everyone. So I have finished the first half of the heel. So I have, I've stopped one stitch inside the marker on the left to start this next part, but I have six unworked stitches on the right of the marker and six unworked on the left. And by unworked, I mean that they have not had a German short row done on them. I'm sure you guys picked up on that, but I wanted to say that just in case. Uh, so this is where we're gonna do start the second half of the heel, which is actually easier. There's not a whole lot of counting. So it first starts by knitting all the way across the left side. So we're going to start knitting those double stitches together. So that's three, four, five, six. Here's my first double stitch, and we're just going to knit it as if it's one stitch. So, you know, make sure there's, there's a couple of pieces of yarn in here. There's this outer leg, and then there's this inner leg. Make sure you're getting both of them to knit this double stitch into one stitch, just like that. So you're going to do that, and you are going to knit the last stitch of the row, the one that we didn't work at the first half, we are going to knit that stitch now. So you're going to knit all of these double stitches plus the last stitch. Uh, if you did a really tight German short row, then congratulations. This part might be a little tricky, but that's good. The tighter it is, the less you have to worry about holes. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, and here's the last stitch. It is going to be loose. Don't worry about that. When we close up the corners, that will get taken care of. So, now this is where we're going to do our German short row on our last stitch. So with your needle, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> 
All right, make sure your yarn is in front, and we are going to slip the stitch as if to purl. Sorry, this is not kind of an annoying setup. So we're going to slip the stitch as if to purl, and we are going to pull nice and snug, wrap around, and now we are going to purl all the way back across, all right? Purling all the way back across. And keep these purl stitches nice and tight. I'm struggling a little bit here. That's okay. Uh, but as as close to the previous stitch as you can, that's going to help minimize holes. Uh, and then get to the marker. So I... I also, um, I, I haven't mentioned this before, try to do the heel all in one sitting if possible. It's better to just get it done so you don't have to try and figure out where you left off. Um, that being said, also try and the heel go a little slow. If you drop a stitch while doing the heel, I cannot teach you how to pick that back up uh, because I don't know how to do it. Anytime I drop a heel stitch, I have to rip out the heel and start over. So go nice and slow. Oh, that's another thing. You could probably put in a lifeline before you start your heel. I haven't, um, but that's also a thing you can do. Okay, so we're almost up to the double stitches on the purl side. Here they are. So again, we're just gonna purl these together as if it's one stitch just like on the other side of the sock here. Nice and slow, you don't want to drop these. Well, you don't want to drop any stitches if you can help it, but nobody's perfect. Actually, while I was knitting the second part of the heel, I did, the needle did slip out of one of the stitches, um, but luckily I didn't actually drop the stitch. I was able to put my needle back in and keep going, but I almost did have to start over, which would have been incredibly devastating. So, going slow, we're almost to the end here. The pearl stitches, or the, this side of the sock always tends to have tighter stitches. Okay, this is my last double stitch, and it feels like it's trying to split on me. There we go. And we will purl the last stitch. We will actually work it. Turn our work. And again, yarn in front. Get set up here. Yarn in front. Slip it to purl. Give that a real, really, oof. My fingers have been kind of weak recently. So, pulling tight's not <laughs> great on my hands right now, but nice and snug, insert into the next stitch, and knit. Now knit back to the marker so that we can begin the second half of the heel. And this is where we're going to include the technique that I haven't tried before, but I have seen done. So uh, we're going we're gonna to give that a shot here once we get back to the marker and I show you how to do the second half of the heel. So almost there. All right, that's the marker. So remember that we had left a certain number of unworked or un-German short road stitches. For me, that is six. You're gonna knit that number. So if it was five, if it was four, if it's six, if it's eight, we're going to knit that number, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Those are your unworked stitches. Now we need to work a stitch. So we're going to knit seven, so that's our next stitch, that's the one we're going to do our German short row on. So now we've knit it, we're going to turn our work. Yarn in front, slip as if to purl, pull tight, wrap, insert, and purl. Now we're going to work up to the seventh stitch or whatever number past the marker on the other side, but I'm going to get to the marker and we'll do that counting again. 
Okay, we're at the marker. Now remember I have six unworked or unshort rowed stitches. So the one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to German short row the next stitch, so I'm gonna go ahead and purl that. So that's stitch number seven for me. Yarn forward, turn the work, slip with yarn in front, pull snug, insert as if to knit, and knit the stitch. All right, so we're gonna knit back across. Here's the marker. Okay, now since we're doing this the opposite direction, we need to German short row the stitch on the other side of the one we just German short rowed, right? So, that means we're gonna knit the double stitch on this pass. So we're gonna knit the six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm trying to remember where she did that technique. It might have been, okay. So this one, we're gonna go ahead and knit the double stitch. That's the German short row stitch. Now, we're going for the next stitch to do our um, German short row on. So what, uh, what she does, here's the stitch on the needle, right here. Here's the stitch below that, and the stitch below that. So the stitch two below, you're gonna pick up the right leg put it on the needle, and knit those two together. Like that. All right, now we're gonna do our German short row. So now we're gonna turn the work. With yarn in front, insert and slip as if to purl. Pull tight, wrap, insert into the next stitch to purl, and we're gonna purl across. So that should help close the hole when working the knit side. We actually don't have to do that on the purl side uh, because just the way it's constructed usually doesn't leave any holes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, Here's the German short row. We're going to purl that one. That's seven. And now we're going to purl the next stitch because that's the one we're going to put our short row on. Yarn forward, turn. So this side is exactly the same without any extra techniques to do the short row. Sorry, my dogs are outside barking. Slip with yarn in front, pull snug insert to knit, and knit across. And there's the marker. Okay. And we're gonna knit up to our next double stitch, which is also the stitch we did that technique on. There's the stitch before. Here's the double stitch. So we've knit that. There's the next stitch. Stitch on the needle, stitch below, stitch below that. Pick up the right leg, place on needle, knit those two together, turn the work. With yarn in front, insert and slip as if to purl. Pull tight, wrap, insert to purl, and turn. So the German short rows are the same, just on this knit side we have that little extra bit to help close up any additional holes. So I'm gonna do one more set with you, and then I'm gonna tell you where we're gonna end so that we can reconnect in the round 
and close up our hole uh, holes in the corners so one so now we're gonna this is the other side purl we're gonna get up to that double stitch again on the purl side we don't need the extra just the way it's constructed it always leaves a really nice seam so here's the double stitch and the stitch after purled yarn in front alright with yarn in front slip give a nice tug and knit the next stitch and knit across alright so I'll do this one more time with you so you can see it now um, the German short row technique there are a few great videos uh, on YouTube one is by Roxanne Richardson she's got three different types of German short row heels which I think are great uh, but the hole the closing the holes technique I learned from my friend Sammy at my local yarn store uh, and then the closing of the corners technique I'm going to show you after we're done with the entire heel I got from the knitting expat here on YouTube as well uh, so you can always go and check those videos out here's the double stitch all right yeah that's looking a lot better stitch on the needle stitch below stitch below that pull up the right leg which is kind of not cooperating where is that it's here yeah that one Put on, knit two together, and turn the work. All right, purl, insert as if to purl, tug, wrap, and purl across. And this will be the last purl stitch I show you. Uh, and then I'll tell you where we're going to end before we start the last part of our heel. Let's get up to that point. Anyone ever feel like their chow goo needles get sharper as they use them? Because I feel like I'm getting calluses on my fingers now where I basically just keep stabbing myself. Oh well. Anyway. Okay. Almost there. Here's the double stitch. And the stitch after. Yarn forward, turn, work. Slip with yarn in front, give a nice tug, insert as if to knit, or insert to knit, and knit across. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to continue to alternate where you knit the double stitch and then do your German short row on the next stitch. And what you're going to do is you're going to end, you're not going to work this double stitch on this pass. You're going to get up and you're going to do a German short row on the one before the double stitch on both sides. So where you will end on this side with a double stitch. Uh, with two double stitches on each side so you'll have one here and one here and you're going to end there uh, and then I will rejoin with you and show you how we're going to finish the heel put it in the round put it back in the round and close up our corners all in one go so go ahead finish your heel uh, of course rewind this video if you need to remember how to do any of the techniques and I will join up with you when you have the two double stitches on both sides Okay, welcome back. So I'm going to show you here where we've ended. I've got my double stitch and my double stitch on the right side. My double stitch and my double stitch, which actually somehow turned it out to be a quadruple stitch. I think I picked up the wrong <laughs> stitch when I did this. Anyway, we're going to knit it as if it's a double stitch anyway, so it's not going to matter. So we've got the two double stitches on the left and the two double on the right. So it's okay if you've knit a couple stitches because that's fine. That's the direction we're going to be going anyway. So, uh, go ahead and knit 
back across and when you get to the marker if you're not going to be using a nine inch circular uh, and you're not trying to mark the beginning of your round you can remove your marker so we're gonna keep knitting we're gonna keep knitting and knitting and knitting we're gonna knit all the way to the end of the row knitting the double stitches now don't worry about the ones on the other side of the needle we're gonna get those on our way back around all right, so here's our first double stitch, which is actually a quadruple stitch somehow. So we knit that one. And here's our last double stitch. We are going to knit that one. Okay, now we are back, we are set back up for magic loop, if you're doing magic loop, or two circulars. Uh, we are set back up and we are gonna go back across. Now, this is where a lot of people run into trouble is this corner because look how big of a gap that is and look how loose these stitches are. Not a problem, I'm going to show you how to fix that. So go ahead and get set up as if you're going to start the next round. Ooh, This is a problem with how tight I knit sometimes. <laughs> also, this doesn't like to work on my interchangeable sometimes. It catches a little there which is why I got the fixed one for sock knitting. Okay, and pull this one along. Now what I recommend is, um, hold on, let me get set up. Get me some yarn here. Okay, so here's the stitch on the needle. Here's the stitch below, which is whew, real loose. And here's the stitch below that. And mine there is also really loose, which is still going to leave a hole. I'm going to go, you find a stitch that's a little bit tighter. So this is the fourth one below, or the third one below, the one on the needle. If I can get my needle in it. Mm, okay, that one's not going to cooperate. So this, this one here is fine, right here. It's a tighter stitch and it's not going to leave a hole. I'm going to put I'm going to grab that and then here's the stitch on the left needle, the stitch below that and the stitch below that which is still kind of loose. So I'm going to grab the one even below that, the right leg of that. I'm going to put those two onto the left needle. Then I am going to insert my left needle into both of those stitches and I'm going to knit those two stitches together. So uh, for those of you going, oh, well, you've added a stitch. Yes, I have. And we're going to do that on the other side as well. You are going to, uh, and we're going to cover that here in a minute. Just go ahead and knit to the other side of this half of the sock. And I'll show you how to pick up the stitches on that side as well. And then we'll do one more round together. I'm happy to be back to just plain knitting. Oh my goodness. I don't mind purling, but sometimes it can get a little strenuous on the hands in such small needles and yarn. I love my sock heels, but I'm starting to think I'd love to get to a point where I could do maybe the afterthought heel. I don't know if I want to do that either. Alright, we're getting close to the end of the needle. Almost there, and boom, knit the last stitch. All right, and get set up to go to your next side. This might also be a little tough because of the double stitches, but that's fine. Go ahead and push. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on this side than we did on the other. Ugh. Oops, sorry for hitting the mic. Why isn't this cooperating? Okay. The cord wants to sit somewhere different. It doesn't want me to do it this way. Okay. Stitch on the needle, stitch below. Stitch below is still kind of loose, 
So I'm going to take the one below that and then stitch from the left needle is a double stitch. So here's the stitch below that, the stitch below that which is still loose, and the stitch below that which I think looks pretty secure. Take those, put them on the left needle, insert, and knit them together. Now you're going to knit your double stitches from the heel. The last two double stitches that have to be worked. One and well because you created them differently they're a little harder to knit sometimes but knit them together or knit each one separately and go ahead and continue back across the bottom of the sock which is where the heel is this cord is fighting with me today I told you guys I've figured out how to do this magic loop but it is not so magical today it got me through all right I want to get back to the other end just because this other side was kind of loose and I might have to do a little bit more fixing but we're gonna observe that uh, together because that's how we learn right sometimes things don't work out the way we want them to and we gotta look and see if we can fix them another way almost there Now another thing you can do here on this last stitch is knit it through the back loop to twist it. Twisting a stitch helps tighten it up as well, which is what I just did. So it is a little loose, but I don't think it's going to be much of a problem as we continue to knit along. So I'm going to slide that over. Goodness, this is why I don't like my interchangeable for sock knitting. Okay, and I'm going to insert to knit. So another thing to just try and remember to do is keep your stitches close together. And a lot of this will block out if you, if you choose to block your socks. But uh, yes, I did add two stitches to the total stitch count. You have two options here. You can either knit four or five rounds and uh, then do a knit two together at the beginning of each needle to get back down to your stitch amount. Or if you wanna leave just a little extra room for your calves, you can leave the stitches in there uh, and it'll just create a, like a, a, it'll just give you two extra stitches for going up the calves. Um, so it really is up to you. I chose to decrease on my other sock, but uh, if, if you want to leave them in, you are more than welcome to do so. It is not going to affect things in a drastic way, so that really is up to you. So I'm going to knit this last stitch through the back loop to twist it. helps tighten it up a little. And we're going to do one more across the bottom of the heel, just to cover all of the weird stitches that we had covered with the double stitch and everything else. Insert. All right, and this is where I'll do the, you know, that extra little tug to get things nice and close. Sometimes I'll do that for the first couple of stitches just to make sure I'm not adding any extra space that doesn't need to be there. And then, yeah, so we're going to get back down to this corner and see how things are holding up. If I need to do something to fix it, I will. If not, I won't. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. It was a little bit looser than the last sock, but I think it's going to be fine. I think it's going to prove to be just as good as the previous sock. I'm almost there. Again, yarn is great. It, things that look kind of weird before blocking will a lot of times fix with blocking. So I'm going to go ahead and knit this last stitch through the back loop again just to be safe and tighten it up. Again, you don't have to do that. That's a personal choice. So here you'll see I do have a little bit of a hole. Hold on. I do have a little bit of a hole. And that is just because of how loose things had been when I was working on that side of the heel. Uh, I did not get that on the other one. 
So one thing you can do is after you've finished knitting your sock, uh, you can take a piece of scrap yarn and weave in some ends to just pull that a little bit closed uh, when when it's all said and done. It really so part of the problem is when I started the heel, this side of my work was really loose already to begin with. There's nothing I could really do about that except pay a little bit more attention the next time I knit a heel. But again, uh, when you're done, you can always get some scrap yarn and just weave in the ends and close. You could do like a little uh, mattress stitch or something just to close up that hole. Um, but it should be fine. It looks good. Everything looks great. That's So that's the knit side. But see what I was talking about on the pearl side? Isn't that, it's almost seamless. It's gorgeous. It's perfect. The knit side, it's just, it's finicky. It's weird. But um, that is something you can continue to experiment with and anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed learning how to knit the heel of a sock in German short rows. It's a great technique. It's a lot of fun. I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, yeah, good luck. And remember to post pictures of your socks on Instagram using hashtag BKSAL2019. Uh, that hashtag is in the video description box below as well as I'll probably put it on the screen somewhere so that you can see it as well. But uh, you can use that hashtag on Instagram so that we can all see your beautiful creations. And if it's your first pair of socks, we can all congratulate you on your first pair of socks. If you've successfully made it through your heel and you're feeling good about it, congratulations. That is the hardest part of the sock. So now what you're going to do is you are just going to knit around and 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 around until you have, I'd say, approximately, try and lay this flat again. Um, I'm going to go with about five, I'm going to wait until I've got about five grams of yarn left. I don't know how much this is. I don't have my scale right here. Um, but I'm going to knit until I've got about five grams of yarn left. If I fold this in half, you can see that the leg is almost as long as the foot here. So I'm going to go, yeah, again, until I've got about five grams of yarn left, and then I'm going to start doing ribbing, and I'm going to do ribbing uh, until I have basically just enough yarn for a bind off, maybe a little bit more than that, and then I will bind off, and I will show you the bind off when we get to that point. Uh, the bind off is a great, uh, there's a stretchy one that I really like to use. It works for almost every calf size, especially if you stay nice and loose with it. It is not your typical stretchy cast, or your st typical stretchy bind off. So uh, it's called the yarn over bind off, and it works really great for socks, especially for people who have bigger calves like me, uh, especially people who have more masculine calves, um, men and women alike. So uh, it's a great bind off for that. So uh, keep knitting. Show me your heels if you have any questions. Please leave me comments. Um, I am actually probably going to pull out some test yarn and see if there's something I can do to maybe refine this technique a little bit more. If I can refine it a little bit more, I'll film a video on it. If I can't, uh, or if you don't see a video on how to refine this side of the heel anymore, just assume that I didn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy knitting your socks, and I will see you again very soon here on the Budget Knitter Podcast channel. Thanks. Bye.